To build big delts naturally, just how strong does the overhead press need to be? Well, that's the topic of today's video. I'll be covering novice, intermediate, and advanced standards alike. And the best part is, everything I'm talking about today is 100% realistic in the long term. So let's cover the beginners first. Upon your first session of introducing vertical pressing with a barbell, you may begin with 45 to 65 pounds for five repetitions, all depending on previous experience level and individual genetics. And so you're not big or strong. How long does it take to get to the intermediate status? Typically about a year's time. And that's where a lot of your shoulder hypertrophy is achieved, usually around 60 to 70%. And so the number that I've seen over the years in most cases ranges between 115 pounds to 135 pounds for five reps, which is basically a 35 on each side or a full plate. That right there should provide some decent cushion, especially if you're doing other presses in your program, because what many forget is that the bench press still builds your delts. In fact, the close grip bench specifically is one of the greatest successful movements for raising the OHB. Not to mention all the other movements we do in addition to isolation work. So it's not just the standard itself, it's the synergistic program that gets you to that point which eliminates that bony appearance. So that's the most basic standard of all, 115 to 135 for five reps. I can also simplify it down to one repetition, but in most cases, unless you're blessed in bodybuilding, I don't find guys look big with that. That said, there's another late novice to early intermediate standard that may just be slightly more applicable for mass. And that is acquiring a 95 pound overhead press, which is a 25 on each side, for three sets of 10. And I'm gonna say doing this in a fresh state is probably enough. Now you might be thinking, well, that's less weight and half the reps. Surely it can't be that difficult until you try it out. Don't underestimate high volume overhead press. That's all I'm gonna say. Because the difference between 95 and 135 is absolutely massive when we're getting reps of 10 and even beyond in some cases. By the way, all these standards are full range of motion while standing up. And the reason I say this is not because it's superior for hypertrophy in any type of way. It's strictly to eliminate the incline position that's so common. See, when guys do the seated overhead press, they'll often lean all the way back and can lift way more weight. And that's why many have small shoulders despite hitting the numbers I'm saying. It's because they're not doing a true vertical press. And so, you wanna be as upright as possible while ensuring maximum range of motion, which I'll define as two ways. One is touching the clavicle upper chest area, so going all the way down, even introducing a pause if you so choose to, and the second is going right below your chin. So you start right here. And if you look at the arm bend, that'll be more than 90 degrees. If you're doing this, like your typical gym bro, I'm sorry, that's quarter repping, and that's why you don't have big delts. I've seen way too many guys, especially on the dumbbell press, putting up some next level numbers, yet their delts don't reflect that. And it's not because strength and size aren't correlated for natties. It's because the execution is incorrect. So keep that in mind before you falsely label yourself as intermediate or advanced, because now I'll be covering those standards, which are a lot more extreme and slower progress. So I hope you enjoyed those newbie gains, my friend. All right, for intermediate lifters, I'm gonna keep it nice. One times body weight overhead press. That means if you weigh 175 pounds, you should also be able to press that exact weight over your head. One all out grinder. It's something that everyone should strive to achieve. I would say this is the 275 equivalent of benching. Though if you're really heavy and tall, this might actually be an advanced standard. So know that it is slightly skewed towards lower body weights because if you weigh 100 kilos and you're also overhead pressing that, man, I would call you bare minimum advanced. So given the fact that you'll probably be a little bit lighter lean body mass wise, while also not exceeding 20% body fat if you closely watch my videos, this should be a fine PR to shoot for. Otherwise, a step above this would be 1.2 times your body weight. That's when things get really intense. 
So if you're in the 181 class, that means your overhead press would be in the low 200s in order to be advanced. And the journey between intermediate and advanced can quite literally be years in some cases, depending on your build. That's probably one of the most important features for vertical pressing. It's not just the brute strength. There's just something about the leverages that makes all the difference. Just to say, you saw me bench four or five while only having a two plate OHP. Some people can do only a 315 bench, yet they're overhead pressing 240. So the correlation is not one to one in that way. But what I will say is, I wouldn't be surprised if you can get to advance within a three to five year time frame. And with that said, let's cover another category, my elite guys, though this could technically be advanced as well. What I just mentioned, 1.2 times your body weight for one rep, let's 5X that, yeah. So going back to our previous example of the 181 lifter, that's basically a 217 overhead press. Let's round it up to 220, AKA 100 kilos. If you can hit that for five, man, there's nothing more I could really teach you at this point because you've made it. And the truth is, 90% of you probably aren't gonna get to that point. Not because of genetics, but because it takes a long time and you really gotta grind it out for every minuscule PR. And the size differences might not be that different compared to being a little bit weaker. And with that said, let's backtrack a bit and share one more standard, which is probably number one in having bolder shoulders. That is 75% of your body weight for three sets of 10. But not only that, doing this in a fatigued state. That means if you did a one rep max bench plus three sets of 10 bench, the standard would apply as your third exercise or second depending how you label it if you define different percentages as different movements. So this is a fun pre-exhausting standard that also demonstrates insane performance. Anyone who could do this is pretty much gonna be an advanced lifter right off the bat, even if they don't practice singles, doubles, triples, fives, etc. Like you don't even have to overthink this. If you're already pumped at a max, trust me, doing anything above a plate is so freaking challenging. Makes sense, so the average range will be between 135 and 170, which again, I believe is completely realistic. So that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Pretty much covered everything you need to know about getting big from OHP. Now I wanna hear feedback in the comments section. Do you agree or disagree with some of my standards? And what have you personally achieved? Let's hear it, and I'll talk to you all next time.